going down guys it's your boy studio macgyver and you are listening to studio macgyver's dragon ball and video game podcast today we have a um, pretty big podcast guys gonna be talking about a lot of games um, no anime uh, today if i do talk about anime it's gonna be uh, anime based games um, so i guess that's technically anime um you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that. But we got a lot of things to run down today, man. We got some Cyberpunk 2077. We got Biomutant. We got Devil May Cry 5. Luigi's Mansion, Jump Force, uh, Indivisible, um, My Heroes, One Just, One's Justice. Uh, we got some shit to talk about, man. Gamescon 2018. Um, yeah, man, a lot of shit. So um, I guess we're going to go ahead and get started. Um. Oh, uh, and last but not least, let me just say, uh, I'm getting a Nintendo Switch. Yeah, <laughs> you heard that correctly. I am getting a Nintendo Switch. So by the time you listen to uh, next week's podcast, uh, I'll be talking about that and my experience with that. Uh, yeah, man. So between this podcast and next, I will have a Nintendo Switch. So I'm going to tell you guys why I decided to make that decision. And we're going to get into that um, as well in this podcast. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? All right, guys. Um, first on the list is cyber ch- uh, blah, 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 blah. Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, I'm getting very, very frustrated, you know, when that game um, leaves my lips or leaves the uh, tip of my tongue because, because I don't understand one thing. Okay. These motherfuckers have shown the game. Okay. To a select few um, of media, the media staff, whoever they chose to show. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing may, maybe about 50 people, probably a little bit more than that. Has got a chance to uh, see 45 minutes of gameplay and, you know, we, the public have not, you know, gotten that opportunity yet. And my question is why um, it's rubbing me the wrong way, because I'm not understanding why you would show 45 minutes of gameplay to a select few individuals. And then you can't even give us five minutes. We can't even get a fucking trailer. OK, all we get is steel shots and none of those steel shots are actual in game uh, gameplay footage. That is my frustration with these guys. And I'm trying to figure out why the hesitation, what they waiting for. Gamescon was another opportunity for them to show us something and they chose not to do so. And that leaves me with this as well. That leaves me with the conclusion that this game, in my opinion, is not coming out anytime soon, guys. I mean, I was thinking maybe 2019, but the more and more that I dissect everything that's transpiring about and around this game, I'm, you know, figuring that we won't see this until 2020 um, and probably be probably it's going to be a cross platform title. So in other words, they're going to release it for the PS4, but they're also going to release it for the upcoming generation consoles, PlayStation 5, Xbox, the new Xbox or whatever. Um, that's the only conclusion I can come to, man, because I don't understand why we're not getting it. Why would you show why would you show 45 minutes of gameplay? but not show, you know, anything to anyone else. It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, that I'm a little pissed about that. You know what I mean? So if I had to say something to <laughs> if I had to say something to these guys, man, I'd, I'd probably uh, go go to a little bit too far. But that's just my uh, you know, this is me being a gamer and me, you know, being frustrated and, you know, feeling a lot of um, a lot of people's frustration. You know, I'm not the only one here. That, that is trying to get something something about this game. You know, I love The Witcher, Witcher 3, um, have The Witcher 3. And, you know, I just want to know what's going on with the next title. And I feel that they at least deserve to. Sh- I, I think we deserved at least, you know, five minutes of gameplay footage. You know what I mean? That's just me. That's just my opinion. I'm going to move on to the next game anyway. Um, and I'm going to jump on Biomutant, guys. Um, this is definitely... This is definitely a, a, a sad day uh, of this podcast because this fucking game, man, I was I was so looking forward to playing this game in 2018. I mean, this was my most anticipated game of 2018. And I should have I should have known better, you know, when 
you know, I got the release date, which was what, December 31st, 2018. And then to learn that it was just a fucking placeholder and that was it. But I didn't put two and two together, which I should have done um, with uh, THQ Nordic, which is the company who is responsible for this game. They're a very small team, a team of 18 people. And anytime you have a, you know, a gaming company or a gaming team that is is, is relatively smaller, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get some uh, delays. You're going to get, you know, a large turnout um, rate over the game. And that's just that's just what it is. That's the first thing. The second thing I should have noticed was the fact that, you know, THQ Nordic is a European division of THQ. And the reason why they didn't show anything at E3 is because, you know, yes, E3 was, you know, more so on the Western side. Um, and, you know, I, I, I missed that. I, I didn't I didn't put two and two together, but uh, they were pretty much missing from E3. Um, but Gamescom, we did get, you know, a lot of footage. A lot of new coverage for this game, which I am very, very excited about. And that kind of, you know, makes it a little bit harder to swallow and it makes it a little bit more frustrating because, man, the new gameplay footage was even better uh, than what I saw before. And it just makes me a little bit more frustrated because I have to wait longer. And the release date is they said somewhere around summer of 2019. So that's a whole fucking year away, guys. They're not anywhere close to finishing this game. Um, which, you know, also puts my mind at ease. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this game, uh, mostly positive side, but you know, the game does look a little bit raw and rough around the edges, but, um, you know, this game, uh, is going to be something special when it does drop. And I'm, I'm quite, quite sure of that. And I cannot fucking wait to see the complete game when it's done i mean even how it looks right now today i mean i would definitely pick it up and and put it in my pocket and run away with it like a you know stolen bag of money if i could but yeah this is still my most anticipated game now of 2019 uh until otherwise uh presented with something new but yeah i'm definitely looking forward to playing this game but i am disappointed in the long um the long time far away release date of summer 2019 so if you guys thought you were going to get your hands on it anytime soon 2018 uh go on and put that baby to bed it's not happening um but you know when it does happen though it's going to be a very very special game Just looking forward to it uh i want to now touch a little bit on devil may cry 5 uh i just want to say this game breathes and shits boo-boos whatever you want to call it man it is everything under the sun that is awesome uh i peeped you know some gameplay footage a demo that was taking place at gamescon and you know my draw hit the floor uh it brought me back to you know it brought me back to the to the essence of you know devil may cry when i remember it first dropping and first coming out on playstation 2 man i remember it like it was i remember like it was fucking yesterday and, you know, all the hype. I remember all the hype around the game. I remember people lining up, you know, to get this game. And it, it brought me back to that, man. And, I, and, and you know, you have three, I think, if I'm not mistaken, three playable characters on this uh, game. And I just think it's going to be something special. Um, I can't wait to see it. Uh, and, you know, I can't wait to see the full game, play it all. The game releases. We do have a release date. Uh, the game releases on March 8th. Um, 2019 so it's not that far away it's like you know the tail end of the first quarter of 2019 so you know 2019 is going to be a big year uh you know usually that first quarter we we get a nice chunk of games the same thing happened last year in 2018 you know that's usually a big um a big section of time that we get some nice titles but devil may cry is definitely awesome man i mean i, I you know words cannot describe how awesome this game is and this demo looks, you can, uh, you can check out all of this shit, everything I'm talking about on YouTube, you know, look it up, just type it in and let the, uh, let the sparkles glisten all over your body. All right. Now I got some news, um, about a Luigi game, which is Luigi's mansion. Yes. Luigi's mansion is actually coming to the 3ds. Yeah, man. It's coming to the 3ds in October of this year, man. And it's perfect timing. You know, ghosts and all this shit, uh, haunted mansions and shit like that. October is the perfect time if you want to release this game. So for everybody who has not had a chance to play it um, on the 
previous console system. I mean, you know, you can definitely check that out on the 3DS. And I think I'm going to do that because I love Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS. It's one of my favorite 3DS games, man. And I think anybody who wants to play something of a, you know, and single player, you know, I guess action game, if you will, adventure game. This is the game for you guys. Luigi's Mansion, you cannot go wrong with this game. Um, and the price dropped to twenty dollars not too long ago because for a minute there it was it was sitting at forty for a long time. And we know Nintendo likes to hang on to those uh those bulky ass prices as long as they fucking can. But yeah, you can pick that up twenty dollars man at your local GameStop. You can probably get it for a little bit cheaper on eBay if you want. Um if you own a three DS and you don't have Luigi's Mansion, man, you sleep. You're sleeping on your fucking self. But now we have an opportunity to play Luigi's Mansion. Uh the uh the first Luigi's Mansion game, and I cannot wait to fucking play that. And it's coming this uh, Halloween or before that in October. So, yeah, pick that shit up, man. I think I'm going to do that. And I just wanted to let you guys know that this game is on the horizon. And if you have a 3DS, hey, it's coming your way. All right. There's another game I saw, man. And uh, man, it was it's, uh, I don't know. When I first looked at it, it looked kind of I don't want to say strange, but the animation reminded me of something. I had like a case of like a small case of like fucking deja vu when I saw this. And that fucking game was a game called Indivisible. Now, Indivisible is a game uh, made by the creators of a game that some of you might be familiar with, um, a fighting game called Skullgirls, uh, a cult classic um, hand animated style of fighting game. And you know, these guys, I remember when Skullgirls was first announced years ago, and I remember when they only had like, I think when the game dropped, it was only like, I think four to six characters um, available when the game first came out. And since then, man, they have definitely added characters, some awesome ones too, man, and even some fucking male characters. The game's called Skullgirls. It was all female roster, but um, over time they've added more, and I haven't even had a chance to go actually look at the roster now as it stands, but I'm definitely going to do that. Um, and never had the game physically, never had the game myself. I've seen videos. I've seen people play it. I always wanted to play it because I am a fighter enthusiast. I do love my fighting games, but man, with so many games out here in these video game streets, trying to get a hold of a lot of these things, man, you get sidetracked and side swiped and you end up looking for one game and you end up with a fucking another. And you know how that game goes, man, especially if you're a, uh, if you're a real gamer like myself and, you know, other people out here in these worlds and streets, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a game I would like to, you know, play. And, you know, the Nintendo Switch has Skullgirls. I mean, I checked on that, but this game here is an RPG. Um, it's got the same kind of art style and feel as Skullgirls, but, um, it's a unique RPG, man. Um, I advise everybody to take a look at this on YouTube and just Google Indivisible for the Nintendo Switch and, you know, get your complete breakdown of what this title entails. And like I said, it's, it's, it's an RPG. And it's different. All I can say is it's different because it, it, it cuts a lot of the fat off of a lot of the things that goes on in your typical RPG game. And it's kind of streamlined a little bit. But I think on a good note that um they they've tried to do this on and I and I I wouldn't be talking about it if I wasn't, a you know, if I if it didn't have any appeal to me or if it wasn't something that I, you know, wouldn't consider picking up i wouldn't be talking about it so definitely check out indivisible guys um nintendo switch is an upcoming title i was look, looking for it for somewhere around you know 2019 no uh real date on this but yeah something to look forward to if you're a nintendo switch fan so yeah okay um another game i want to touch on is uh man um jump force now I talked a little bit about Jump Force previously, you know, in some podcasts and, you know, I man, what am I trying to say? This is this game here is for, you know, anime, anime enthusiasts, anime lovers um, and fighting game uh, fans or whatever. And I think this would be perfect for any 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 one of those. And Jump Force is basically just, you know, anime stars from, you know, the most popular anime out here in the streets. And, you know, it's, it's basically an all out fight. You know what I mean? Um, some of the characters include Goku, Vegeta, Frieza, um, Luffy from One Piece, uh, Naruto, Naruto, however you want to pronounce it, um, Sasuke, um, and, and some other characters. Uh, you got 
you got a lot of different characters from a lot of different uh, anime. Hunter x Hunter's got some guys in there, you know, and so on and so forth, man. But basically, you take these characters, man, and you you create a team, uh, three a uh, man team, and you take them out here in the streets. Everybody shares one energy bar or one energy gauge, and you know you share that. But you can swap out your characters and you know do crazy shit to each other. Um, pause, and you know. You can fight it out, man, in different cities, all which um, are destructible. And, you know, the graphics look fucking incredible. Um, it, it has like a uh, more of a realistic kind of uh, feel to them. If you if you know what I mean. But if you don't know what I mean, definitely check out YouTube and check out Jump Force. And, you know, it's an excellent game. And the cherry on the fucking top. The reason why I'm bringing this game back up, because I have talked about it in the previous podcast before. It's some new shit that was brought to my attention surrounding this game and this is one of the most <laughs> intriguing pieces uh of information that i have received man because i am a fucking stickler for customization and this game was recently described or recently uh they put out you know some information on this game and this game will actually be a game where you can actually create your own custom character. Yes. Yes. You can create your own character in this game. Imagine that shit. Okay. Imagine you creating a game uh, or a character in this anime world um, and taking different powers or different techniques from some of your favorite anime characters and using it in your own creation and then pitting that person against other players online or just, you know, PV pve man i mean in the game i mean just think about how dope that is man now it's one thing to be like talking about xenoverse or talking about you know shinobi striker and you're creating your own avatars in that world but it's one other thing to be talking about doing the same thing in a huge world within the whole universe of anime think about that and let that shit sink in for two shakes of a lamb's tail man it's beautiful I, for one, cannot fucking wait to get my hands on this. And that alone is the fucking seller for me. I was going to buy it anyway because I'm an anime fan and I love, you know, some of these characters. I'm anxious to see who else is going to be added to the game. I think I've discussed this previously and I've, you know, let you guys know that I hope that One Punch Man is in this game. Um, I hope that, you know, maybe even Berserk uh, from Berserk. I hope Guts is in this game, you know, maybe Griffith, you know, some of these characters, you know, make it to this title, man. Um my Hero Academia, of course, you know, all my, you know, Deku, uh, some of these guys make it to this game, you know, so I, I'm already hype on that train as it is. But to add your own character, come on, man, you can't get any fucking better than that. You just fucking can't, especially if you're a, you're a guy who loves customization, you know, like I do. Um, this is going to be awesome. I can't fucking wait. Um, and they're slated to try to release this in 2018. This game is still slated to try to be out this year. So I hope they I hope they're able to do that, man. I mean, I really do. Um, it will be a very, very big thing if it can happen. So, yeah, I thought I'd share that information with you guys, man. Definitely, definitely check out Jump Force. Um, all platforms is coming out for it except uh, the Nintendo Switch, which, you know, I don't think can handle handle it. But, you know, Xbox One, baby, PS4 for sure all day. And I think PC. Um, but don't let me get to lying. I don't want to give anybody any false hopes. But for sure, I know Xbox and for sure, I know PS4. So we'll leave it at that. OK, um, the next thing I want to talk about, guys, is uh, my hero wants justice. I saw some footage on this the other night. I was up very, very late and I was, um, you know, I was feeling really good. I was buzzing. I was doing my thing. And, um, you know, I was, you know, doing my due diligence and looking into some of the uh, GamesCon stuff and trying to find some new some new things to discuss. And I came across a gameplay video uh, of My Hero One Justice, the My Hero Academia video game coming out. And I got a release date on that, too, guys. It's going to be October 26th. And that's going to, you know, bring up the next part of my discussion in, in, a, in a second. Two shakes of a lamb's tail. But I just want to say that this game is going to be awesome, in my opinion. Um, it's, you know, it's a 3D brawler. Um, it's going to have online play and whatnot. And if you're a fan of My Hero Academia, you're going to definitely love to play this and want to play this. 
Um, it's available on all platforms, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. So um, there'll be no shortage of that. You can pretty much get it on anything you want. I think it's also available on PC, if I'm not mistaken. But for sure, those three consoles, it is definitely uh, available. So um, that is also a good thing. Uh, but what I wanted to discuss uh, about this game, guys, is the fact that it's releasing on October 26th. OK, because this is a game that's on my list and a game that I want to play and I'm going to eventually buy. But when you release it on certain days, this is where the in, this is this is where the issue arises, man, because I think if you're not familiar and if you guys do not know, October 26th is the game. I mean, I'm sorry, is the fucking date that um that's the date that uh, Red Dead Redemption is coming out. OK. October 26th is the same day. Um, that's not very good marketing, if you ask me. If you're, you know, Bandai Namco, if you're trying to, you know, put out a title, you know, on a day. I mean, this is one day that you wouldn't want to put a title out if I was them. Um, yeah. Uh, now, it depends on what kind of lens you're looking at this through, because if you're looking at it through the Nintendo lens, I mean, it's not coming I mean, Red Dead Redemption is not coming out for the, for the Switch, so you, you're you safe on that, I guess. But still, if you if you're if I'm a marketing uh, rep, if I'm somebody who's trying to, you know, put out a game and make it, you know, viable uh, for the company to make their money. I mean, I'm not going to put it out on the game on the day that, you know, one of the biggest games of the fucking year is going to be dropping, which is Red Dead Redemption 2. That's just retarded. That's just stupid. Um, you're going to lose a lot of sales that way. And probably you're going to, you're going to lose my sale because most people don't have, you know, multiple, um, uh, you know, multiple bags of money to be spending all this money on. I mean, usually, you know, you, you got, you know, budgets and stuff, you know, me personally, I have like one game. Usually it's, it's, it's about a one game a month budget. You know, I try to stick to that. Sometimes I, I go over, you know, sometimes I get lucky and there's nothing, there's nothing that comes out that month. So, you know, it rolls over. But um, as of late, man, there, there's nothing rolling over, guys. There's nothing rolling over for me personally. And I'll get to that at the end of this podcast and you'll understand what I'm talking about then. But as of right now, I mean, you cannot put out that game uh, the same day as Red Dead Redemption. It's just not wise. And their sales are going to suffer a little bit because of that. I mean, I know there's a lot of, you know, My Hero Academia fans out there, me included. I'm one of them. But, um, you know, this game is definitely going to give a lot of people. Um, it's going to it's going to make a lot of people to go into the restroom, turn on the lights, look at themselves in the mirror and make some decisions because they're only going to be able to make one decision on both of these games when they're both fifty nine ninety nine plus tax. I mean, you know. Yeah, one hundred and twenty something dollars for one day. I'm I'm not really trying to do that. Now, if you got the money, if you got the, you know, if you got the money and the guap and and whatever, man. Hey, by all means, do you do your thing. But um, if you're you know you 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 got other things you got to take care of and you you got room for one game. I mean, then you have some decisions to make. Uh, and one of those decisions is which one should I get? And nine times out of ten, guys, I mean, I'm seeing in most people they're going to be jumping towards um, Red Dead Redemption 2 first. I mean, that's just what that is. Hey, but, you know, I could be wrong. Like I said, I mean, everybody doesn't think like I think um, everybody doesn't have the same play style and like the same games that I that I like. So I can't really say that. And I have to do better on assuming that, you know, that's what that uh, is in that situation. I find myself sometimes um, you know, assuming that everybody thinks the same way I fucking think, I mean, that is so far from the truth. Um, uh, you know, my, my style of game, my favorite genre is open world, you know, single player, you know, RPG action adventure type games. Um, you know, that might not be Trey's or that might not be Sarah's, you know, favorite genre. They, they may be looking forward to, you know, this, but fighting is definitely next in line. Fighting is my second favorite genre. So, I mean, you know, uh, hence why, you know, Red Dead would be chosen first, but some, somebody might like fighting, you know, first and, and they might be really looking forward to this My Hero Academia before anything else. And that's all they see. They have the tunnel vision. So, I mean, you know, that's neither here nor there, but, you know, for me personally, and I, I can just speak for myself. This is just my opinion. I mean, most people, in my opinion, are going to be picking up my, uh, not my heroes one justice. They're going to be going for Red Dead Redemption too. Um, you know, they've got online, uh, I know they're going to have an extensive online world open 
And, you know, of course, the single player thing, I, I'm buying it for the single player experience first and foremost. Um, I will be playing online, but uh, if they said that they weren't having any online uh, modes available, I'd still buy this game with a smile on my face because that's what I'm looking forward to playing the most. Um, I hope they wow me with the online mode. And I have a feeling that, you know, Rockstar Games, they're, they're synonymous with doing that. They are very, very good at, um, you know, taking care of the the consumer as far as contents being, you know, delivered and all of that. So I, I rest, I, I leave my faith in their hands with that. But yeah, that's just my gripe with, with what's going on there. You know, certain games, man, just shouldn't be released on the same day as other games because these are powerhouse AAA games. And, you know, you just got to be careful, man, if you're in a marketing division for some of these companies, because it could cost you your fucking job. So just be careful. If you take that L, if you get your throat cut, uh, your throat cut, um, in that corporate world because you decided you wanted to put it out on the same day as a fucking powerhouse game like this, like a rock star game, you know, you're digging your own fucking grave. That's all. And I'm leaving it at that. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. The last thing I want to talk about, uh, on this podcast is a decision that I made, um, really just two or three days ago, actually. And, uh, you know, I had actually made this decision, decision, you know, a while ago, but the timing was a little bit different. In other words, I planned on buying something, but I didn't plan on buying it, buying it until, you know, somewhere around the first quarter of 2019. But um, after further review, I have went ahead and hit that um, hit that play button. I went ahead and pushed play and I decided to get. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm saying this. I decided to buy a Nintendo Switch. Yes. I am going to be having a Nintendo Switch. So the next podcast that you guys listen to, um, I will be a Nintendo Switch owner. I will have a Nintendo Switch in my possession, guys. And a lot of you are probably wondering, especially the, the listeners who've you know listened to me since day one and heard my rants and heard the the shit and the fire that I was spitting about this system, you know, in the past, are probably asking themselves and scratching their head and wondering what. Why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying? But if you listen to my, you know, past podcasts and listen to some of my YouTube videos, then you probably fucking know why that is. And one of the reasons why I always said that I wouldn't get a Nintendo Switch until they had more games, until they had a, you know, a significant amount of titles that, you know, I was pleased with. I needed a cushion. I needed a, you know, I needed a a nest egg of games before I take, took that leap. You know, I didn't want, you know, one or two games, just a few games, you know, to get a system. That's to me, that's just not, it, it, it's not viable. It's not a reason to, to, in my opinion, buy a complete system. If you just, if there's not enough titles available, you know, and now I can finally safely say that with uh extensive research and friends talking to friends and all of that and everything under that umbrella, which it gave me, you know, the reasons I needed to go ahead and make this purchase, man. And really the number one reason why I, you know, decided to get this uh, Nintendo Switch, man, is one fucking game. Um, and it's a game that's been eating away at my brain forever. I mean, for as long as I can remember, as, as long as I've first seen the first clip of footage of this game, and that's Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a game that I, for some reason, and I can't really explain why, I'm just infatuated with this game. Now, I can give you some reasons, I guess, uh, if you will. But, you know, you you ever see a game that, you know, you don't really know what it is about it. It's just a feeling that comes over you when you see this fucking game. And it's just like, man, I have to have that. I have to play that fucking game. Right. And this game does that to me, man. Um, I am a sucker for lore. Like, I love lore in video games. I mean, God damn it. Um lore is so so important in my opinion especially you know when you're talking about certain genres of game when you're talking about like metroidvania or you're talking about anything rpg anything in that in that realm under that umbrella man you, you know lore goes a long fucking way and then next is art direction like art direction in a game you know is so crazy that's why bio mutant is so special to me because i just love the the, the art style of it i love its own it has its own personality man everything from you know the comic book the big um buff comic book you know words and letters to the little you know um silhouettes that 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 float over the dead bodies i mean just it, it's its own thing and then the customization itself in that game um this game here um the art style has sold me it, it's always sold me um the black and white 
um, a lot of um, really warm uh, lighting in this game. Um, it's tons of boss fights, tons of secrets in this game, different endings in this game. Um, you can go through the whole game without even, you know, fighting, you know, you know, a third of these uh, bosses if you wanted. And if you wanted to learn more about the lore and what was going on in the world, of course, you want to try to tackle everything you can or as, as many things as you can. And, you know, this game just it just bought me. It sold me. And and the biggest thing of all of this is the fact that, you know, it is only fifteen dollars. That is it. It is only fifteen dollars. Now, the downside to that is the fact that this is a game that I actually wanted to own physically. But, you know, I'm not going to get that opportunity right now because it's just digital only, you know. But this is the game that everybody's been singing about. This is a game that I have been singing about in my own head for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks. And I told myself that the first game I want to play and the first game I want to get is this for the Nintendo Switch because PS4, we don't have this yet. It's coming to the PS4, but not right now. It's not available. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of games that, you know, I want to play that are, you know, available on multiple platforms. But um, some games, in my opinion, I just feel that they should just be played on the, the Switch. And I and I told myself that when they have enough of those that is when I'll decide to purchase it. And believe it or not, no, the AAA titles aren't the reasons why I want to switch. The, the reasons I want a switch and I decided to go and get one is because of the the um, indie games, man. I love me some indie games. And one of the indie games is Hollow Knight. That's the number one. That's the numero uno. But there is a fucking gang of them that I have found. Um, and, you know, I cover Nintendo. But I don't cover Nintendo like I cover PS4, you know, and, you know, because I'm a PS4 owner. And now that I am going to be a uh, Nintendo Switch owner, I decided to dive deeper into the world of Nintendo, uh, current Nintendo events and what's been going on. And I've discovered a lot of shit, man, um, worth talking about on this podcast. And I will say this about Nintendo fans, about Nintendo fanboys and everybody, you know, who who support Nintendo. They are their own community. They they um and they're not gonna let anybody fuck with it i will tell you that right now um there's so much going on in nintendo in the world of nintendo man that i didn't realize until i you know lifted up the curtain and and, and dug in and, and started you know doing some research and finding out these things man there and now i'm i'm kind of understanding now why you know people feel the way they feel about this system um you know it has its flaws it is not perfect don't please don't get it twisted and I've talked about these before. I mean, the battery life to me is definitely something that, you know, should be addressed going forward. But, you know, there's it depends on the game you games you play. So, you know, if you're playing a triple A title, which is, you know, a bulky title, you know, 3D and open world, you know, you're going to get, you know, two and a half to three hours out of that game. Um, as opposed to playing something, you know, of an indie title. And, you know, you can you can get five to six hours out of those indie titles, you know, any of those games that are under, you know, a gigabyte in size, you know, you can get a lot more out of it. Um, but you know, and then the other gripe of mine is, is, is basically the app. Um, they want you to get an app for your phone. Uh, if you want to, you know, basically communicate and have party chat or whatnot. And I think, you know, that is the way of the fucking dodo. I don't know why Nintendo's doing this. It's kind of like that thing where, you know, everybody goes to the store and buys a fucking lollipop and you buy, you know, the shittiest lollipop out of your friends. And basically, um, you have to, since you bought the lollipop and you've already walked away from the store, you have to, you know, stick up for that fucking shitty lollipop. No matter what your friends tell you or no matter what people tell you, you have to stick uh, up for that lollipop because it's yours now. And that's kind of how I feel about this fucking app with Nintendo, man. I mean, I think they fucked up. They smell their own boo boo. And now they're just trying to pretend that they don't smell it, that it doesn't, does it, it doesn't have an odor. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to be funny. I just I'm just keeping it real because games um, out here nowadays, we're in the, we're in the world now where, you know, technology is advanced, man, far advanced. Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't have party chat, you know, in, our, in these games. And I think Nintendo's on its own fucking crash course when it comes to that part of it. Um, case in point, Fortnite. Fortnite is the only game, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on the Nintendo Switch that has native voice chat so in other words if i have fortnite on my nintendo switch and i wanted to play somebody else um that plays fortnite then that voice chat i can plug in my earphones and i'll be able to talk to them and communicate with them and you know they're sharing you know 
with Xbox right now. So in other words, if somebody's playing Fortnite with Xbox and they're in a the server, you know, that server is shared. So, you know, you could communicate with some Xbox guys or whatever, whatever. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is a lot of these games, you know, are made native. Um, they come native with that. But Nintendo chooses not to accept that because they're pushing this fucking app. They're pushing this phone app. And I'm telling you right now, Nintendo, that's one thing that will die. Um, then the system is alive and well and very strong and kicking and it's, it's a dope system. Um, but that's, that's going to die. You're going to have to, you're going to have to, uh, leave that behind and, and get with the program, get with the current events on that. But other than that, you know, those are my only real two gripes with the system, man. And then there was the lack of games, but now, you know, that remedy, uh, has basically taken over and washed all over my fucking body because now I have a lot of games and to choose from, I, the list goes on and on, man. I found some fucking gems in here. Um, yeah, Steam World Dig 2 is one that everybody's singing praises about. I mean, that's one I'm going to jump into. And that's only like a $20 game. Like all the games that I'm looking forward to playing, they're not even AAA titles, man. Most of them are like indie titles or, you know, AA titles. They're not, they're not AAA titles. Um, uh, Golf Story is another game that I've, that I found that I've, I've looked at and I want to play a lot of, uh, it's basically a golf game in an RPG setting. So it, it, and it, it actually goes together so well. Cause one of my favorite games ever is on the DS. It's a golf game on, on DS, man. And I could play that fucking game for hours. But now you got a, um, you know, a 16 bit type of, uh, type of design and it's set, it's a golf game and it's an R&B. I mean, not R&B. What the fuck am I saying? it's it's a uh it's a um rpg um game so when i saw that i was like yo i have to play this and i've heard a lot of youtubers and a lot of people who really really dig this game and i think i'm gonna be one of those people and these games are cheap these games are no longer more than like ten dollars fifteen dollars tops and there you have it you know what i mean and there's a lot of other games here that i have not listed that i am definitely ready to play um and I can't wait to fucking play Crossing Souls is another game. It's basically a uh, it's a 16 bit retro style game set in the 80s. Um, yeah, it, it's it's the soundtrack is stupid, crazy. And, you know, it's another game that, you know, I can't wait to sink my teeth into. There's so many. Um, and I find I mean, I'm finding new ones every day. Like I'm constantly researching. I've been the last few days. I've been definitely um looking at videos trying to find the best indie games just best games period in the genres that i like to play and man i've i've come away with uh you know a couple dozen so far so i basically you know i'm set when my nintendo switch gets here i'm set man i've already ordered a case for it um the next thing and really which is the last thing is trying to decide on what screen protectors to get if you guys know, if you guys have any recommendations, I definitely appreciate that. You can hit me um, on Twitter at Studio MacGyver. Please uh, holler at me. Leave me some uh, suggestions. What What is a good uh, protector uh, case? Because there's a lot of them. I def- I've done some research and there's a shitload of them out here, man. So I want to find the right one. And, you know, and I'm only going to really be playing this dock. I mean, undocked. Like I don't I'll set my dock up to my TV or whatever. But nine times out of ten, guys, you know, the reason why I bought this also is for a portable system. This is something that, you know. I'd play in bed or I'd be at my desk playing or whatever, you know, um, when there's nothing to play like on, the, on the PlayStation and, and the games are slow, you know, I could see myself jumping to the switch and doing some things. Mario Kart is another game I want to play. Uh, I've always been intrigued by the Mario Kart games. Um, they just make a pretty good game. I'm a, I love Luigi. So, you know, <laughs> Luigi on deck in the car. So we're going to figure out what we're going to do, man, out here in these, uh, these these are uh, Mario Kart streets uh, soon. Very, very fucking soon. But yeah, I'm very excited, guys. I, I you know, those are just a few reasons why I've decided to pick up a switch. I was waiting for games. I had to make sure I had the library nice and thick so that, you know, when I did choose some games, there were some other games out there that I could eventually, you know, lean towards. And all of that is, you know, all of that is complete. All of that is, is done. Um, and, you know. I mean, that's the main decision. That is the main reason I decided to get it. And, you know, I think that I wouldn't have made the purchase if I was not, you know, pleased with what I've seen thus far. Everybody's singing the Nintendo's praises now. They're they're doing extremely well. I've always uh, been a fan of Nintendo and always wanted Nintendo to do well. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you how I feel. And that's with any console, with any system, whatever. You know what I mean? 
Um, and, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I mean, if you go back to some of my early podcasts, I fucking ripped Nintendo two or three assholes. You know what I mean? Because when it first came out, like I said, the library was not was not appealing at all. They had nothing out here that I wanted to play. So I just immediately frowned on the system. And then with the low battery life, um, that combination kind of fucking killed the vibe for me at first. Um, but now I'm glad I waited. And, you know, now there's a lot of games available. I've, I, I failed to mention Bayonetta one and two. I definitely want to play me some Bayonetta. Um, I played one and I haven't played two. So that's another game that I'm looking forward to playing. And then Bayonetta three is on its way at some point in time. I'm also looking forward to uh, No More Heroes, which is another game I cannot fucking wait uh, to get my hands on uh, when that is released. And there's a couple other games out here that I haven't discussed that are coming in 2019. So there's some things coming, guys. There's some things that are already here. So I have plenty of games to play now when I get the Switch. And I'll have plenty of games now to look forward to now uh, going forward. Now, it, it, that's what it, really what it, it, it was about. That's what I was waiting on. And I was also waiting and to see if they were going to come out with another system. Uh, you know, I was paranoid and, and still rightfully so still a little bit paranoid on them coming out with the next version of this. And now I'm, I'm basically telling myself if they do fuck it, so be it. It is what it is. Um, it'll be just what they do. I mean, they did it to me on 3ds and if they do it now again, Hey, whatever. Um, but I do see them supporting the system and, the fans and the community and Nintendo of this system and is is man is really I think one of the strongest ones out here even over Sony or and everything man they they have everything for Nintendo man Nintendo this switch has like the community is crazy it's so huge and they have all kinds of things I mean from con custom controllers to you know um, cases and, and and all these other things man that you can actually go out and buy um, that are supported by the community. It's crazy. I've seen a Nintendo, um, a Super Nintendo, aka Super Falcom controller that looks just identical to that, except for the only difference it has these, these two analogs on it as well. And it's wireless. And you can actually go out and buy that for your Nintendo Switch. You know what I mean? Um, there's Hori, some decent Hori fight sticks. There's all kinds of shit, man. So I'll eventually get a controller. I'm not going to get that one that's $70 right now, that wireless one. I'm definitely going to stay away from that right now because, like I said, I'm not playing it docked, even though I could play it undocked like that. But I'm not I'm not into, you know, I'm not into doing that right now. But, yeah, when the fighting games come out or whatever, I might have to make some decisions on finding me a, a stick. But the Hori stick is only like 20 bucks. But like I said, there's so many options and so many different price ranges, man. You can pretty much find something to your liking, something tailor made. There's something out there for everybody. If you're a Nintendo switch owner, man. And now, you know, that I've waited so long and these things have come up and has, you know, prospered that, you know, it, I feel a lot better because now I'm, I'm dug in and now I can kind of just go out and take my time and, you know, play what I will and do what I want. Um, with this game and then you know have a chance to play with my son as well who is five and who loves the Nintendo Switch and who claims he wants one for for Christmas and, and whatever even though I think he's still a little too young for for one but he will be getting a uh, he will be getting a 2DS um, I've looked at and I think he's ready for a 2DS you know they're more durable they're they're made for younger kids and I think he'll get a kick out of that that's going to be his starter system I'll give him that and you know and we'll go from there man um, but yeah man just hey this podcast is about done, but um, I had to let you guys know, know that and what I was doing and, you know, not too much stuff going on um, as far as game games con, you know, there's a little few, few things here and there. But like I said, we got a little information on some of these titles, um, but now I'm, I'm happy to say I'm coming to the Nintendo Switch family. So I hope you guys open uh, welcome me with open arms. Um, I won't have any friends uh this this first week or whatever so i'm going to be trying to make some new friends on on the switch so if you guys uh or gals who own nintendo switches are out here in these streets and you're playing it um you know be looking out for studio macgyver man um i'm going to be out there so be looking for me probably somewhere you know around thursday or friday you know late you know at the latest by next weekend so um and if you see me out there, man, go on and send me a request. I mean, I don't even know how how none of this how this stuff works on Nintendo, but I'm, I'm sure I'll figure it out, you know, as I as I move on. But <clears throat> happy to announce that that is going to happen. And I just want to say uh, thanks every thank you to everybody who's listening to the podcast. Uh, I've recently looked at some of my numbers, and they were for this month. It was fucking astounding. I'm so pleased. 
I had a huge uh, number of uh, downloads this month. Don't know what happened. Don't know where it came from, but I'm just going to say thank you. Um, and everybody who's listening, I want to appreciate you, whether you've been listening from day one or you, you're new and uh, continue to listen, man, continue to support me. And I will continue to put these podcasts out, man. Um, you can also reach me at any time in social media on Twitter at Studio MacGyver, um, Instagram, uh, Studio MacGyver 79 and the YouTube channel Studio MacGyver's TV. Um, with that being said, guys, I'm going to get the fuck up out of here, man. Um, it's about 45 minutes, man. I've been going. So thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for listening. I love you guys. You have been listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. See you next time.